What's up, Alabama fans? Producer Chris here to discuss Alabama's 26-20 win over Texas A&M. Alabama shoots themselves into first in the SEC West and make themselves contenders to go to the SEC championship with this win. This was a very, very big one for Alabama. But before we get into this post-game breakdown, make sure you guys subscribe at Roll Tide TV right here. Do it right now for me. We get, we're going to bring you Alabama coverage all year long, so make sure you guys subscribe right now. Okay, first things first, we're going to get into some injuries that happened during the game. Um, James Burnett, the punter for Alabama, was injured. We don't really know what happened. They said he was he was um, grabbing like the hamstring upper quad area. So we don't really know what happened there. Will Riker came in to punt the ball for Alabama in really it was like late in the first half and then throughout the second half. Um, and honestly, you know, Will Riker did a pretty, pretty decent job punting the ball. And the second injury that is really, really notable in this game, Malachi Moore went down in the first half. Lower body injury. We don't know anything as of right now when, you know, I'm filming this before the Nick Saban press conference. Once that happens, I'll go back and watch it. I'll put it in the comments for you guys exactly, you know, what he says about Malachi Moore. What we know right now, lower body injury, not good. Not good for Alabama's defense. Now, the defense was very good after he went out. But, in my opinion, Malachi Moore has been a major, major, major key to this Alabama defense this year. You know, last year he, you know, kind of had a had a setback year, wasn't very good. This year, he's been great. In my opinion, he's been one of the best players on this Alabama defense so far. So, you know, when it comes to injuries, James Burnup, Malachi Moore, both not, not great things to happen because James Burnup, has also had a great year punting the ball. You don't really hear that a lot, but he has had a great year punting the ball for Alabama. So I want you guys in the comment section right now, grade Alabama's performance versus Texas A&M right off the bat. A, B, C, D, or F. This is going to be the pinned comment. So let me know right there at that pinned comment, grade Alabama's performance overall, offense, defense, special teams, everything against Texas A&M. Okay, my first takeaway from the game, the defense played great. I mean, as good as you could hope for, right? Like, it, I, I hope I'm not alone in that and thinking that this is, this is as good as you would ask for the defense to be in a game like this. Caleb Downs, another interception today. Last week had his first this week has a second on a very, very big play. And it came right after Jalen Milrow's interception. Kind of hit him with that Uno reverse card, if you will. Um, that was a massive, massive play for Alabama's defense. Alabama's defense also racked up, you know, only three sacks on the day. Tim Keenan, you know, in my opinion, I thought he played really good. Got a lot of pressure on the cornerback. Justin Abogbe? Amazing game, man. A breakout game for Justin Abogbe. Um, Dallas Turner also had a sack. And Jaheim Otis also was in there for another half sack is what they gave him on the stat broadcast. Quarterback hurries. Alabama had seven. I mean, all day long, uh, Max Johnson was not necessarily running for his life, but Alabama's defense was up in his face all game long. And I love that. I love seeing that. Since that Texas game, um, Alabama has done a really, really, really good job rushing the quarterback since that Texas game. It's been great. Um, they also forced that safety. Justin Abogbe with pressure. Uh, they ended up calling intentional grounding in the end zone. Safety, that's great. That's awesome. Um it was amazing to see Mal uh, excuse me, Tyrion Arnold had a couple really, really big pass breakups. That was great to see as well. Overall, I thought the defense played, you know, as good as you could really ask. You know, in a game like this in 
at Texas A&M in Kyle Field, 12th man, just, you know, an amazing environment overall in college football. It was a great, great performance, in my opinion, by the defense. Takeaway number two, Jalen Milrow, career day. Career day for Jalen Milrow. Who would have thought? The narrative going into this game, from all the talking heads that I saw on, you know, whether it was ESPN, CBS, it didn't matter, Fox, everybody said, okay, if Alabama can run the ball well enough to keep Jalen Milrow under 15 passing attempts, Alabama can win this game. Well, what did we see? What did we see? Just a career day for Jalen Milrow throwing the ball. 21 for 33, 321 yards passing the ball. Three touchdowns, you know, one interception, you know, Ah, you know, it, it sucks that he had that interception, but you know, it, honestly, at the end of the day, it's a great play by the defense. Whatever, um, running the ball, terrible, absolutely terrible. Alabama ended the day, twenty-three yards rushing, twenty-three yards on the ground. Now, that comes with the sacks. We'll talk about that a little later. Jace McClellan, net yards, he had forty-five. Um, yards on 12 carries, still not very good. 3.8 yards was his average. Roydell Williams, kind of abysmal. Six carries for nine yards. It's pretty terrible. Um, Jalen Milrow, negative 31 yards. Like I said, a lot of that is going to be on the sacks, which we'll talk, talk about the offensive line here in just a little bit. But I love, I, I've been on this Jalen Milrow bandwagon since the beginning since the beginning and he's had some rough games no doubt no doubt he's had some rough performances but in a game going in to Texas A&M one of the hardest environments to play in college football in a game that I'm not going to say decides the SEC West but it plays a pivotal role into who goes to the SEC championship out of the SEC West and he played out of his mind. He played out of his mind. Um, you know, we'll get into the wide receivers here. Jermaine Burton, nine catches for 197 yards, two touchdowns, one fumble. You know, that the funny thing about that fumble is if he didn't fumble the ball on that play, he would have gone over 200 yards receiving on the game, which, you know, I don't know for sure, but I would assume that that would be a career high for him too. That it's going to be a career high for him anyways, 197 yards. Isaiah Bond, behind him, seven receptions, 97 yards, one touchdown. I thought these guys played very, very well. And it was evident going into this game that Alabama saw something in Texas A&M secondary going through the week preparation on film that they wanted to expose. And they absolutely did. I mean... Like we said, Jalen Miller, 321 yards, a career day for him. I mean, this wide receiver group, we have a lot of, you know, positive thoughts for. We think they should be, I think they should be elite, but they haven't been so far this season. They weren't last year either with Bryce Young. And today, man, those two guys, Jermaine Burton and, and Isaiah Bond really, really stepped up to perform in a massive game so far, you know, in Alabama season. So I want you guys right now in the comment section. We asked earlier in the week on our Alabama versus Texas A&M preview, which didn't get as many views as we'd like. But, you know, you know, keep your eyes out for that. Keep your eyes out for that. Um, we asked on that one, who is Alabama's wide receiver one? You know, nobody really gave me a solid answer on that in the comments section. And I don't know if I could either. I maybe would have said, you know, Isaiah Bond. Maybe would have said um, uh, Amari in a black. You know, him being a tight end, but Alabama kind of uses him as a wide receiver. Um, but there, there wasn't really a solid answer for that. Okay, another game here. Who is Alabama's wide receiver one? Let me know who you think it is in the comments section, whether it's Jermaine Burton, Isaiah Bond, you know, I really don't know who else it could be after that, but let me know right here in the comments section.
All right. Talk about some ugly real quick. We talked about some good. Now let's talk about some ugly. Um, Alabama's offensive line. <sighs> Another pretty bad game for them. Now, just overall, nine pre-snap penalties for Alabama, all on offense. I think one of those was on Jermaine Burton. Um, one of those was on C.J. Dupree, but the rest of them were on the offensive now. Now, granted, I did think, you know, those two that they called on 77, I didn't see him move. I didn't see him. Maybe he did. Maybe he did. You know, I'm kind of writing notes and doing some other stuff at the same exact time, but I didn't really think he moved, but it doesn't really matter. Nine pre-snap penalties for this Alabama offense at least seven of them on the offensive line. Um, still can't run the ball. Still can't run the ball at all. Um, Alabama had five rushing yards in the first quarter. Five. That's it. Five rushing yards in the first quarter. Alabama ended up giving up six sacks. My God, dude. When can we get it together? Now, I will say this. Seth McLaughlin played a little bit better. Um, snapping the ball anyways, there weren't, you know, I think maybe one time I noticed it, you know, snap was kind of low, didn't really affect much. Um, you know, overall that was my worry going into the game, going into this game with Seth McLaughlin snapping the ball when Jalen Milrow wasn't ready in an environment that is one of the best in the SEC. Uh, that was one of the things that I was worried about. Obviously that did not happen today, but still six sacks. Negative 13 yards rushing in the first half. We just get no push. Zero push on the offensive line. We end the game 43 yards total rushing the ball. Now, some of that comes with the sack yardage, 43 yards uh, sack yardage. Still six sacks, though. I mean, all the way to the end, we couldn't run the ball. Like, even trying to run the clock out right there at the end of the game. Couldn't run it out. You know, Jalen Milrow freaking spikes one ball right into the ground that if he gets it over to Malik Benson, you know, he makes the catch. Whether he makes the first down or not, it really doesn't matter. You know, Alabama doesn't have to go into that situation where they're trying to run the clock out with seven seconds left. It's it's just it's one of those things, man. The offensive line has not, not been good at all this year. And still this game... They did enough to win the game. You know, there were definitely times where Jalen Milrow had time to throw the ball. Um, even on some of those sacks, he just held it too long. But still, man, the offensive line cannot get a push in the run game. And you can't give up six sacks. They've given up so many sacks this year. It's, it's not good. It's not good. So let me know right now in the comments section. I want you guys to give me your confidence level in the offensive line after, you know, this game we're now, you know, into the season so far. We're a good half probably at least into the season. Let me know your confidence level in Alabama's offensive line. Mine's not not mine's not very high. Mine's not very high at all. Um but I'll let you guys discuss it in the comment section. Last thing that I want to talk about is points taken off the board. We saw it again this week. Um, you know, it's, it's another touchdown taken off the board. I don't really remember what it is right off the top of my head. The six, maybe, you know, throughout the season so far, touchdowns taken off the board. Another one, massive, massive, massive blocked field goal in this game. Chris Braswell, scoop and score. And Dallas Turner, you know, it's it's 15 yards behind the play. You, you can run to the sideline. Like, you don't have to do anything. He gives a guy a little nudge. And, you know, in my opinion, it's kind of a BS call. You know, dude didn't even go to the ground. Dude, I mean, he didn't even fall down. The guy didn't even fall down. So... My biased opinion, terrible call. Just a terrible call. But 
doesn't take away the fact that he, he shouldn't have hit him at all. He shouldn't have hit him at all. Um, but overall, Alabama, I thought, going into a game where still, just like that, just like the Ole Miss game, people were picking against Alabama in this game. I don't know what the line ended at, but it was down to one and a half on Friday when we put out our preview video. And Alabama, yet again, yet again, defeats Vegas. Defeats Vegas, winning this game 26-20 to over Texas A&M and takes control of the SEC West. Just overall, you know, I give it, it's a good performance from Alabama going to one of the toughest places to play in college football, in my opinion, in Kyle Field, you know, to Colt, whatever, it's, you know, that's fine. They can do what they do, but Alabama is also going to try to do their best of what they do. Now, I want to give myself a little bit of a shout out. I did predict the score 24 to 20. Bama, the score was 26 to 20 Alabama at the end of the game. And if that safety didn't happen, you know, I would have been cooking with fire, baby. Um, But that's just, you know, that's just some fun stuff that we're doing here at the Alabama Football Report. Before we go, make sure... You subscribe to the channel at Roll Tide TV. My name is Chris Daughtry. I'm the producer for this channel. You normally see Tom Downey. I'm behind the scenes. But for these post games, I am going to give you my honest opinion of Alabama's post games. So Alabama wins this one 26 to 20. I'm going to give it a big old Roll Tide. Put Roll Tide in the comments section for me. Let's go. Mm-hmm.